Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of my vlog on the Go On Your Jazz Summer School uh, slash interviewing people about improvisation. I still didn't work on a title, I yeah, I should, should really work on these things, shouldn't I? On this part I cover a little bit more about what the course has to offer. I also interview a few more musicians about their journeys into improvisation and there'll be a few more performances as well, including the hotly anticipated uh, rendition of Black Market, which I was very happy to perform on. I've been wanting to perform that song since I was 17. So here it is, the second part of the Dorgonia Jazz Summer School vlog. Um, enjoy. Day two. Takan has started. And I feel okay. I'm just a bit tired. There you go. And I'm gonna go do some warming up. Masterclasses today, instrumental masterclasses, and then we've got some performances or rehearsals. Sorry, I just got thinking as I was going through a practice how people look at improvisation and what, where is the struggle? Why do people feel so unease or at, at, at such a discomfort with that? Is the issue with improvisation just down to the fact that people are uneasy with their instruments? Because my thinking is. If, even if you can teach someone three or four notes, you know, if they have a, if they have a basic grasp of their of the instrument, and you can teach them three or four notes, surely that that will be enough for someone to try to improvise or or, or at least give it a go. So I brought Reiner here because uh, I wanted to ask him on his thoughts on improvisation. And I haven't heard you play in three years and I've heard so much de development from you as an improviser. You sell yourself to the devil and then <laughs> yes. here goes. Yeah. I went to the crossroads. <laughs> yeah. Did you learn improvisation at school? Were there any opportunities to have your teacher teach you about improvisation? Or no, what? I never had any, any kind of uh, really? uh, teacher about with teaching me about improvisation. So. I just found out about this magic pentatonic thing. <laughs> <laughs> the magical pentatonic. Then I came here, I met a wonderful teacher, um, and he gave me some input that was lasting. I believe they everything you, you don't know you. already for a long time is, is, is kind of so difficult to, if you, play the bass, you know, you, just know jump in no and, and start and play something that makes sense, you know. And I love to play something that makes sense. Day three in Montetom. You can hear the band rehearsing behind me. Just had a rehearsal myself with Yaz. One thing that popped into the head when I was talking to Reiner yesterday was about the relationship between how well you know your instrument and how well you feel comfortable with playing around with notes or scales. Surely there's a way where you can improvise and not feel like, not feel insecure about your lack of ability on your instrument. I certainly have students who are fantastic technique in grade six, grade eight. Yet when I ask them to improvise, they look at me like I've uh, got to throw them off a cliff. I don't know, it's something I like to think about more while I'm here. Hopefully I get some more answers to that. I want to see him walking down the street. 
Street of South Africa. Day six of the Montaton experience. Today should be fun. We've got the rehearsals for Hermeta Pascal workshop groups. It's funny with improvisation. I think you need to be in a you need to be in a consistent state of mind where you're just you just let go and you 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 play whatever pops into your head. It can be a quite an, a tough experience when you're not quite in your head when you're improvising or at least you're playing music that is relying on improvisation there's always that feeling in the back of your head if you're not quite nailing a solo it's it's that little voice or that feeling tells you it's not quite right anyway i'm gonna go and practice and i shall catch you later so i'm here with young sam here a, uh, a fierce guitarist phenomenal phenomenal player you've got a really really good ear and a really good sense of timing and good phrasing did you learn improvisation at school did you have as part of your music lessons or what was the deal at school i don't think we really learned about it in school but more through other people at school they're like friends that may have listened to improvised music you're you as an improviser right now where how do you, where, where are you? Where do you see yourself? I see myself above someone who would see it as just a hobby, but I, there's loads more to learn. To be able to express yourself fully in the way you want to, that's the goal. I want it to be part of a, a full-time career as a jazz musician. If you had to turn the clock back and you had to go back into school, do you feel, do you think that you would have benefited if your teachers would have taught you how to improvise? I'm not talking about improvise over jazz, just general improvisation. Yeah. I think, yeah, it helps you find ways to express yourself as a person. And like, with, it helps with things like confidence, those kind of elements of your personality that you might not have at those ages. Do you think you, do you, think you would have handled it? Or do you think it would have been something that would have been a bit too above what you want to go with? I think people can handle it. I would have handled it. There's very simple things you can you can do to express yourself and that is the overall aim of improvisation. Mm. workshop groups coming up in the evening and uh, big old party and paella and be fun it's nice to be coming back as a student which is you get to see it on the other side you get to see how how it works on the side so working as a mini professor and now as a student it's very interesting 
I thought John Bratoff's workshop on um, the use of melodic minors over 251s, major 251, was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. The way he explained everything, simplified everything, simplified a very difficult comp uh, scale. The students were getting into it. They were, within a couple of minutes, they were accessing, accessing the sound. And they were really getting into the sound of using melodic minor. And it was, it was great. It was a really lovely moment, actually. <laughs> So there we are folks, thank you so much for watching my vlog uh, at my time at the Dogonia Jazz Summer School. I've come back from the course really inspired and wanting to practice and shed loads of things that I just been putting off for ages. Looking at the improvisers on the course, it was really interesting how I interviewed uh, the musicians and there was a lot of common points that they were bringing up when they were talking to me. The lack of improvisation at school level, or at least they felt like they, did, they weren't taught how to improvise. Now I'm saying this not to knock any of my fellow colleagues here, we do, we do an amazing job. I'm, I'm just interested to find out why improvisation isn't being covered as part of our musical education. It, it can do fantastic things for us. The ability to think on your feet, the ability to interpret, and especially as a musician, it, it's got me out of so many tricky situations with the ability just to think on my feet and to improvise over something. Thank you again for watching my vlog. Um, I hope you had as much fun watching it as I had making it. I had a lot of fun making it. And I guess until I see you again, take care um, and start improvising as well. Very important. Yeah, you're such a lovely person. <laughs> How can you say that? You're such a lovely person. It's, isn't he? He's lovely, isn't he? He's lovely. There'll be like six people watching this, so it's fine. It's okay. Just, uh, I don't have a big audience. All oh, right. Yet. Anyway. Yet. 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 yet.